perhaps more visible in recent decades, but has always been a vital and integral part of this great Seattle community, leading the country on the issues of equality and inclusion from discrimination and from bigotry. The Institution of Pride Week began in 1973, the year I was born. Well, okay, I'm fibbing on that one. But it was born, the week was born in 1973, the first Pride Parade in 1977. The issues facing this particular community, the AIDS crisis of the 1980s, gave birth to outstanding organizations such as POCAN, the People of Color Against the AIDS Network, which now serves the BIPOC community on a variety of public health issues. Organizations like POCAN standing up for our youth and against inhumane practices such as conversion therapy in 2016. That's where I riff, because when we talk about pride, not a selfish pride. It's a pride in who we are as a community. Who we are. We are capable of loving and being loved. We are worthy. We are proud. Now, I've had the fortune of coming in with several mayors in different cities in this country. Uh, the mayor of Cincinnati, after that, Pirabel, he, he took office the same day I did, and his team gets to go to the, to the Super Bowl. They lost, but Cincinnati went to the Super Bowl. Michelle Wu, the mayor of Boston, she gets elected, and her team goes to the NBA. Of course, they're facing Golden State. That might be a different story. But I told them I have the best hand out of all these new mayors. Why? Because of this. That the LGBTQ plus community demonstrates the best in ourselves. Love, compassion, determination, courage, strength. All of those attributes that makes a city great. I have the best hand. It will even be better when we do get an NBA basketball team, by the way. That's a joke. <laughs> but I have the best hand, and so I'm very, very proud to stand with my, my community today. And the best thing I can do, the best thing I can do is keep evangelizing the love from and to this community. That's the best thing I can do, and I'm humbled, humbled to be the mayor of such a great community. And having said that, and I know Monisha Harrell was cringing when I started to rip, but I make it through, please. She's a tough one. I'm really happy to again introduce a member of the City Council, Council Member Tammy Morales from District 2. Again, another champion and leader for human and social rights, uh, fighting for her community, fighting for underrepresented groups. I present to you Council Member Tammy Morales. been proposed to attack the trans 
community particularly and the LGBTQIA community as a whole. In a matter of months, these coordinated attacks on trans people have swept the nation. This year, I was honored to partner with Alexa Manila of Pride Asia to proclaim this past Sunday, March 29th, as Pride Asia Day. Pride Asia elevates the importance of the LGBTQIA community, of equity, of harm reduction, of public health, as well as the importance of serving our immigrant and refugee neighbors. So today, uh, it is important that we celebrate the progress that has been made. It is also important that we commit to remaining vigilant in our fight to eradicate discrimination, to ensure justice, and to ensure legal protection for all of the LGBTQIA community. Thank you all so much for being here. It's such an honor to be here. Um, especially, I remember being gay in Nigeria and I was told that I would never achieve anything, I would never submit to anything that my life was useless. And today I have the pleasure of reading the proclamation for Seattle Pride Month. Whereas Seattle is home to some of the nation's most active individuals and organizations working to ensure the full and equal recognition and protection of the fundamental rights and liberties of transgender, lesbian, bisexual, gay, two-spirit, other queer individuals and their families. And whereas the LGBTQ communities in Seattle are an integral and vibrant part of the academic, economic, artistic, and social spheres of Seattle. And whereas the month of June was designated Pride Month to commemorate the Stonewall Riots, a series of demonstrations led by black and brown trans women, occurring in June 1969 and generally recognized as the catalyst of the LGBTQ civil rights movement. And whereas over 45 years ago, Seattle held its first lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer celebration, an iconic event vital in our unified efforts to forge a more open and just society. And whereas each June, Seattle encourages its residents to celebrate the program, the progress within our culture toward justice, equality, and full recognition for LGBTQ persons and join us in the fight to eradicate prejudice and discrimination everywhere. Therefore, the mayor and the Seattle City Council do hereby proclaim June 2022 to be LGBTQ Pride Month. To the fight to eradicate prejudice and discrimination everywhere is one that the Seattle LGBTQ is working hard on. We invite the mayor's office and the city council to partner with us to increase our community's access to high quality medical care, housing, and safe communities. Data shows the members of the LGBT plus community are disproportionately impacted by poor mental and physical health care. For example, according to the 2015 US Transgender Survey, trans people are nine times more likely to have attempted suicide than the general population. Our community and community partners, we call on them to increase funding for mental health services, housing, food, and queer community groups, and to develop plans to increase the community's competence among the city's health care. Mothers of Pride, Parents of Pride, Fathers of Pride, instigators of Stonewall, Compton Cafeteria, and other movements across this country. I honor all of our LGBTQ, two-spirit, and gender diverse ancestors who were a steady hand of resistance that brought us our first wave, just the first wave of queer and trans liberation in this country. Together, let's remember them this month and be inspired by their stories, but let's also remember that we still have a long 
way to go. With the recent legislative and political attacks on trans youth, the use of trans bodies as a wedge issue by politicians and the continued violence against trans people, especially by trans women, I want to name how important this pride this year, 2022, is. These attacks are coming for you, especially for black trans girls and women, but they will not stop here. Let's get it, let's not get it twisted. These attacks are attacks on all of our bodily autonomy. These attacks are intended as strategic disruptions to both LGBTQ and gender justice rights. These rights were hard earned and we are not just gonna let them go. I ask us to remember that this pride and every pride following the uprising of the summer of 2020 will forever be tied with Black Lives Matter. A movement that was started and led by black young people, many of who, who were LGBTQ. In this city, many black trans and queer young leaders guided us to truth and justice, with their movement building, they showed us how to truly care for our community. They offered us alternatives to justice and reconciliation. This month, let's not just wave flags, let's return to their calls for action and their demand for the protection of black trans life. The leaders of the 2020 uprising reminded us that pride is synonymous with black liberation. There will be no pride for some of us without liberation for all of us. Yeah. Don't get it twisted though. This month we are going to celebrate the magic and beauty of queerness, transness, intersexness, two-spiritness, blackness, and we're gonna show the world. But like black folks and my ancestors and grandparents and great-grandparents have always done, we will fight on one hand and celebrate on the other. We know how to hold joy and resistance together. We will find joy in the larger-than-life stories of our ancestors, Sylvia Rivera, Marsha P. Johnson, Miss Major, Stormy Delavery, and so many others. We, like them, will lead with our humor, our shade, our sass, and our creativity. However, in the refrains of our laughter, we will continue to organize and be ready to resist this current wave of transphobia and trans massage noir facing our community. We will remember this month who got us here in the first place and we will continue to lift black trans and non-binary leadership. We will celebrate them this month. We will dance hard, we will play harder, but we will remind the world that black trans lives matter trans lives matter. We will tell the world we aren't going anywhere. We will tell those hostile to our community to keep your hands off of our trans and non-binary youth. Let's celebrate today in the spirit of Mother Marsha, but let's resist also while we celebrate. Thank you. At Feast, we create liberatory spaces for low-income and BIPOC youth to imagine and express the changes they want to see in their schools while also building the power and skills for BIPOC youth to become decision makers over the health equity issues that impact them the most. We believe that you should always be at the center of decisions that impact our lives as they are the experts of their own experiences and hold the keys to solutions that will work best to address their needs. At FEAST, we know it's crucial to train young people in organizing so they can keep our collective movements for justice alive and growing for decades to come. Today I want to elevate some of the lessons I've learned over the years of organizing with queer, trans, and BIPOC youth. These lessons guide my work, but also guide how I nurture myself and the people in my life. They help me think about how we hold complex feelings of celebration alongside our grief and outrage at ongoing current events. One of the first things that you showed us during the pandemic is that we cannot carry on with business as usual, especially in times of great grief and loss. We need to pause and check in with ourselves and each other. We need to make sure that we are good and that our people are good. We need to prioritize our health and wellness so we can continue to fight for greater systemic change over the long haul. The mutual aid campaigns and the increased advocacy for increased mental health
health resources that resulted has reminded me of how BIPOC queer and trans communities have always taken care of each other. We have existed and persisted in resistance throughout history. When we live our truth, we make way for others to do the same. Among other gifts, we show the world how to love and collectively care for one another. The role of joy and celebration is often underrated in social movements. Organizing for systemic change takes years and even decades. So how do we sustain the energy we need to fuel our movements, especially amid unyielding intersectional crises? While there's not just one answer, I know that joy and hope are necessary to keep our movements viable. Last week, as I grieved for victims and families of Buffalo, Uvalde, and the ongoing violence against black and trans communities, my hope was challenged to its core. It seemed like some divine intervention that I had the privilege of being mentored by an incredible organizer and author named Miriam Kaba. She's one of the most prolific thoughts on hope that I've ever heard. She said that hope isn't an emotion, it's a discipline. We must practice it every day. In feast organizing trainings, we talk about hope as a muscle. And like any muscle, hope must be exercised. While discussing how to cope with friends, I wasn't sure what I had to offer because I was deep in my own grief. But as we touched on the thought of losing hope, my muscle memory kicked in. My response was this. Becoming bitter and becoming complacent is the antithesis of who we are. Be yourself, feel your feelings, but most importantly, don't let anyone or anything stop you from expressing the love and optimism in your heart. Your love is a gift. And as many years as we and our ancestors have gone through hell, we are still here. Keeping hope alive is not just who we are, it's what we do. Another lesson I've learned from you is about centering radical joy. We find affirmation, connection, and joy in spaces that were not historically created for us, and this is a monumental act especially on this holiday of pride that is at times complex and sometimes co-opted. The ways we care for our community and envision a better future are the truth. Our history and our truth cannot be taken from us. So allow yourself to be present, enjoy today, and celebrate Pride Month. I hope you find moments of joy all year long. And as you fill your hearts with happiness, Share it with the others in your reach. We need these moments of joy, these moments to remember the beauty, brilliance, and sacrifices of our ancestors, the world they made possible, the world we protect and push to be more just. We are our ancestors' wildest dreams and the truest embodiment of resilience. May the positivity we generate fuel our ongoing fight for justice in the years to come.
inspiring, and, and this is part of what makes Seattle the beautiful city it is. We've had so much um, support for our community. We have found a home in this community. This is where we have called home to not only build for Seattle, build for Washington State, and set the blueprint for building for this country. To those watching, happy pride to all those who celebrate. Thank you. 